Space is hard. This is tough stuff. This is technical gee whiz stuff. Today, there's a new space race. The tension is growing. Beijing's goal, to put its own astronauts on the moon by 2030. China and Russia turning away from NASA, now teaming up together to build a lunar space station. China <laughs> wants to put their flag and just say, we'll take this area. China certainly is our number one strategic concerns in terms of a threat to the American people. We must have American dominance in space. NASA has never worked with China because of national security concerns. The Chinese are very intolerant. They are very inflexible. They are not very transparent. International cooperation in the thermosphere is deteriorating. China has discovered a brand new moon mineral, and it could one day fuel nuclear fusion reactors. So once again, China and its space ambitions are in the spotlight, this time for the moon mining and weaponizing space, and even claiming the moon itself. What could they do on the moon? Do you think they could uh, sort of colonize it and use it for military purposes? I, I can tell you what they could do. They could go to the south pole of the moon where the resources are. And they could land and they would say, this is our exclusive territory, you stay out. We're not gonna let that happen. Remember, we are gonna fly humans to the moon at the end of 23 or the early part of 24. It's gonna be a lunar orbit and then it's gonna come back. China has planted its flag on the moon more than 50 years after the US first planted the stars and stripes there. After all, this could one day power successful nuclear fusion, the holy grail or near limitless clean energy. Let's recap just how we got here. China has made a number of leaps in lunar exploration since beginning its robotic moon program in 2004. In successful missions, the nation has successfully launched first a pair of orbiters, then a lander and a rover. On January 2019, China became the first country to land a probe on the far side of the moon, the part that perpetually faces away from Earth. The challenge, the U.S. can't see potential Chinese operations on the far side of the moon. We need to understand both um, in the, the lunar space and the space between the Earth and the moon. What are they doing? Why are they doing it? Does it pose a potential threat to our interests? And most recently, executed a complex sample return mission. It scooped up nearly four pounds of rock and soil and brought them back to Earth. The first lunar samples since the ones collected by the Soviet Union Lunar 24 mission in 1976. 1,731 grams of samples from the moon, marking China's first successful extraterrestrial sampling and return and the completion of its three-step lunar exploration program of orbiting, landing, and bringing back samples, which began in 2004. This was the fifth lunar exploration mission of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program and the first lunar sample return mission. Just recently, scientists found a single crystal of a new phosphate mineral while analyzing the lunar basalt particles which were collected from the moon two years ago by the Chang's 5 mission. Many minerals found on Earth have also been spotted on the moon. Few new minerals have been discovered on the moon though. The team isolated a single particle of the new moon mineral from more than 14,000 other particles in their sample. The US and the former Soviet Union have found five and now China National Space Administration has discovered a sixth moon mineral named Changesite. It contains helium-3, which is an attractive option for fueling nuclear fusion reactors. And there could be as much as 1.1 million metric tons of it in the first several meters of the lunar surface. 
Helium-3 could become a significant lunar export for power generation around the world. Limitless clean energy may become a reality within the foreseeable future. America's outrage and claims of China taking over the moon come to no surprise. Do you think we're in a race with China or do you think you could say, let's work together on uh, space exploration? I wish we could, and Lord knows we've tried, uh, but China has been crickets. Uh, they're very, very secret. I, I mean, I could go on and on. Uh, uh, China just is unwilling to respond. Um, so they could go to the South Pole of the Moon where the resources are. And they could land and they would say, this is our exclusive territory, you stay out. I haven't said they're gonna do it. I hope that they can be talked out of. But I am certainly painting the scenario that that's something that they could try because they've already done it. So suppose we get to the South Pole of the Moon first. We make it open to all international uh, participants, just like we've done with our International Space Station. Yes, it takes two to tango. Uh, and so China has to be willing. I think we are willing. Uh, and I'm mindful of the law that says that we can't do business with them unless I certify that it does not in any way harm national security. Uh, and uh, thus far, China has not been forthcoming. But if one nation or one company or group could figure out how to do it, that would be a game changer. For that to happen, we need to figure out where to find large amounts of helium-3 to effectively mine it and how to master fusion. This starts with a rocket launch and a probe on board. Next up, the Chang'e 5 lunar probe is separated from the rocket. Followed by the orbiter and lander spread their solar panels. Continued by the lander ascender separated from the orbiter returner on lunar orbit. The Chengdu lander ascender starts its powered descent. One of the final steps, the Chang'e 5 lander ascender lands on the moon. The lander now collects samples with a drill and scoop arm. Samples are placed in the ascent vehicle. And then we have liftoff back into lunar orbit, marking China's first spacecraft launch outside of Earth. With the ascender spread of its solar panels and docked with the orbiter, this is also China's first docking on lunar orbit. The robotic arms pass samples to return capsule on the orbiter. The returner orbiter is separated from the ascender, heading back to Earth. E have touched down. Lander returns to Earth. The lander is located using thermal imaging, and the ground crews are deployed. It won't be the last time China makes history and threatens the U.S. dominance in space. What's the next moon mission? China is planning a project named the International Lunar Research Station ILRS, in collaboration with Russia for the 2030s and is seeking partners to join the endeavor. The Chinese uh, space program is uh, also a military space program. Uh, they are very aggressive and they are very good. 
like any expansion that's taken place by the Chinese and, uh, and the Russians because they're coming together for another reason, an unstated reason, and that is to weaponize space. But our destiny beyond the Earth is not only a matter of national identity, but a matter of national security, so important for our military. The Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a Space Force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big state. We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force. The ultimate goal of these missions is to lay a foundation for a lunar research station. Not only is there plenty of science to be done here, but the moon could also function as a staging base for astronauts heading to Mars. In the U.S., the, the problem is that you have a change in perspective with a change in administration. Obama said that we do not need to go to the moon anymore. We've been there before. Suddenly you have Trump come in and he argues that, no, we need to go back to the moon. It's a moon to Mars. If you've liked what you've seen in today's video, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Reportify Media.